Hi everyone, this is Devonari, not Devonair, it's pronounced Devonari, and is by Brett J. Gilbert. This is his first game. It was published by Asmodee, and yes, as it states, it is a contest of mediums. It's a grand prize of £1,000, and Tuesday, November the 17th, in the 19th century, the late 19th century, this is when this event was happening, and it's basically trying to see who is the best predictor. It's two to four players, it says 13 plus, it says half an hour, and that's pretty accurate, I would say even slightly shorter than that, but it does depend on the number of players. It's about 16 minutes, I would say, I think, even as a sort of two player. The card in here, which is just another game, which I haven't heard of before, Mundus Novus, I think it is. Here's the rule book. We also have it in multiple languages. Here are the various types of ways in which we're communicating with the, the other world, let's say. And here are some of the characters you can be. So there are four different characters in play. You have these characters here. No difference other than the kind of symbol that they have. As an example, this guy is from Boston and he has, you know, a dime or a nickel or a half dollar in this case. And there's some information at the back which kind of tells you about who these guys are. So that, for example, is John Paul Kramer or Kramer. You've got Lord Edmund. You've got uh, this lady here. And you've got this person who's a friend of Edmund, who is Rami Sakur. So I'm going to show you the setup for a four-player game. It plays over four rounds, but two to three players is similar, just to fewer rounds and a slight difference in how um, you kind of get them out of cards. So you're going to choose who you want to be. I've played him. I've played everyone, I think, apart from her. Well, I think I've played everyone already, so I have played this all-player counts. Take that. Somebody else is going to take <clears throat> these other positions. And then playing a four-player game, you're going to choose this one because we're playing four players. And in this game, it suggests the oldest player starts, but um, you can do it as you wish. So we're playing it like this. There are going to be 36 cards, which I'll be shuffling, and imagine I've just shuffled them. And what you're doing is you're playing out these things here. So we have palm reading. We have astrology, so you have signs of the zodiac, you have tea leaf reading, and you have the crystal ball. So these cards are kind of representative of these things. There are different amounts. You can tell how many there are in terms of distribution in the original set. 8, uh, 6, 10, and 12. It makes 36, and you're going to randomly discard 12 cards. So you will not know everything in the game. It's not a solvable game in that respect. And... Um, 12 cards get removed, so just imagine those cards have come out, so they're 12. In this round, we're playing with some cards we don't obviously know what they are. So they go back in the box, and these tokens are going to represent who we are. So the end of the game is to uh, get the most points, and the most points are relating to how accurate our scores are going to be. So everyone takes their respective counter, so this lady's going to take her four here, and everyone else takes theirs. These represent each of the locations that you could go on. You may not end up going on all of them. Uh, you'll probably end up having to go on to some of them, in fact. But it's definitely possible that, based on the cards that you have, it has to be where you're going to go. So you're definitely going to go someplace. So imagine I've, you're going to take these 24 cards, distribute them out, so you end up six each. Three, four, five, six. You're going to take your six, so saying you're playing as her, and this means I can basically give a prediction on how many cards there are going to be in the crystal mancy section. These ones are for the sky, that's astrology, and that's pretty much all I've got. What I'm gonna be doing now is passing three cards to the person to my right. So I could give, give, give giving these people, this person here doing tea reading, let's say it's Edmund, three cards. So they go face down and I'm gonna receive three from Rami or Rami over there. By doing this, this means I'm not gonna have as many opportunities possibly to be placing here, but hopefully I'm gonna Perhaps be zoning in over here. Let's just say I do that. I get three new cards. So this is what this person chose to give me. And bizarrely, I'm ended up with exactly the same thing. Now what I'm doing as a starting player, I'm going to give a prediction. So I put a face up card. And I already know something about this. I know three cards have gone here. They know three have gone, but they don't know I've still got some. So I'm going to place this card here and place my token here. I know there are three here. I know they've got three. So I'm going to say it could be at least six. There could be more. We know that with 12 cards out of the game, there could be um, no more left, which are of this type. So I could go here, I could risk and go here. 
If I go here though, and then I go here the next time, I've got to change my guess. So if my imagine animal's been round, nobody else has been here again, I could then play another card, but I've got to change my guess. Now I know that there were six, at least. Uh, but the thing is, nobody else has played here, I've got to change my guess from what it was. So I could go here. That's a slight concern, uh, because when I go into scoring, it's not going to be as good, because it wasn't a perfect score. If, I said again, there was only six cards. So that means when I place my first one, I might want to go a bit more weaker and go here. The downside is someone might go here and I won't have a chance when I choose to play. For now, I'll uh, just go here. Now everyone else has seen, ah, there's a yellow card. Now this person knew that there are three, they now know there's at least four, so now they could choose to bid, but you go in clockwise order. So this is gonna go round, they're gonna give a bid, they're gonna give a bid, they're gonna chuck something in. And yes, they might choose to do that. But if this person did it, I know I've got three, they've got at least three. If they've got one, that means this is going to start increasing. So that continues until in a four player game, you get down to uh, three cards. So I've been placing out one. You saw I was going to place out another one to then change my bid. When you get down to three cards, you're then going to be passing across some cards. So this is where you have to think about where you want to be choosing to go. So I'm going to think that I'm going to play, um, I don't want to show too much of, 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 um, openness over here because this is helping this person more. So I'm going to go here. And also if I'm only going over here, this is only give me a few, well, you know, only one way of scoring points. So I'll now explain about point scoring. So if I go here, I'm placing one card. I know that there were two at least. I'm going to go here. Imagine that everyone's placed all their cards out. I'm now going to get scoring. If this was correct, there were exactly seven once we've placed all our cards, then I'm going to score three points. Three points are indicated over here by the blue markers. You're going to get a blue chip. And it's going to be face down, but it's blue, so you can kind of tell what it is. If I was incorrect and it was actually, say, eight, I'm going to get one chip, which is a yellow token. If I happen to be six, I only get one as well. But these are the bonus sections. So by choosing to err on the side of caution in this case, or maybe it was way up here and it was in that direction, I'd have gained an additional one. So a perfect or incomperfect guess in this zone gives you an additional one token. Perfect will give you three. Uh, imperfect will give you one. That one, uh, if I happen to be here, that would give me an additional token. So if the right answer was seven, I'd get one point for being one away. And because of this, I get an additional one point. If I happen to be here and the correct answer was this, or I was here and it was this, then I would gain one point being one away and two more points because I'm one away from the extremities. So I was really thinking like, it's unlikely based on the distribution of the cards that it's gonna be way up at the edges, but that's what I'm going for and benefiting. The downside with having to put a bet in this edge is if actually it turns out that the correct answer was here and I was over here, um, then what's going to happen is I lose one point because I'm that far away, plus another point, plus another point. So basically it's an extra two things or whatever it is you're going to be getting. Here I would be getting a minus one for being more than one away and an additional minus one. This would have given me one, three, one, minus one plus a minus, minus one as an example if that was a correct answer and i was here it'd be minus one minus one minus one minus one actually minus two minus three because i've gone for that and that's too far away so that's where you want to be thinking do you want to be like a joker do you want to try and sort of double your score and improve things so i mentioned earlier about swapping cards when you reach six so when you have six cards, that's what you're starting off with. You're then swapping three, getting another three. When you get down to four cards, you're going to be passing two across. So now I've got, uh, well, I did this one already, but say I hadn't. I'm then going to pass two across. Do I give that person, you know, a good heads up on how many cards? I mean, I still know what they are. Or do I want to hone in on this one? Let's say I already know this one. Hmm. And give them this way. Then I take two of these person's cards. Let's just take them. Uh, off the top of the deck and happen to be more of these. So I now know that there are two here. Imagine I have put a, a, a bet in. The downside of here is I'm not going to have a chance to score here or here, which is a problem 
because I'm actually giving everyone else a more free range as to where they want to go. So now I've chosen to think about this and now obviously all I can do is just keep betting here, here, here and probably each of my bets I'm just going to be increasing. I put down three, I had three, uh, so I'm probably just going to keep going duh, 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 and increasing it gradually one by one for each one I do. The downside is on that penultimate turn, again, you don't want to jump straight on the correct answer, especially if you've got a card left. Having said that, I might do that, duh, 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 and then suddenly when it gets two cards, you're passing a card. This person gets this and hopefully oh, it's still another yellow. I'm going to be stuck placing yellows. Now again, it's quite a high chance of getting yellow regardless. It's a one in three chance. Um, you've got to be you know, careful about making sure you do score everywhere else. So that continues until you've obviously played all your cards. That's the end of one round, then you see everyone's score. There's no score pad, you just have to make a note, or you just keep your chips until the next round. Go again for the second round. This time the start player moves to the left, so then you have a chance to go round. Keep an eye on what others is doing. And when you're swapping cards, remember you're actually inhibiting what someone else can do in addition or inhibiting yourself perhaps, but it allows you to get more flexibility in what cards you have and what everyone else is playing. So that is Devonari, And it doesn't matter how you put these cards back. You just want to obviously give them a shuffle afterwards. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting game in terms of that, uh, trying to deduce something and see what else everyone else has played. So I like that. And um, effect from that factor it's um like i said it doesn't take very long it's i guess there's something going on here it seems to work in terms of that deduction um people who have played it have been keen to play it again i think people prefer it at a higher player count i think as a two people didn't seem to really um engage with it much so three or four is good and does take a bit longer but it doesn't quite outstay its welcome it's it's getting on the board line, I think, because of four playing it that amount of times. And sometimes just playing a single round, I think, was quite effective. People like that scores are very close. You can end up with a minus score in the game, but it does the job. And in terms of rating, I I think I'll play it occasionally. So for me, that means it's like, okay, I'll play it when I'm in the mood, according to Board Game Geek, which is a six, which sounds a little harsh, but it's, um, it's a nice kind of uh, symbol to play quick game but there are other games which take longer to explain that can be of that duration but there's a little bit you have to be wary of but like I said it's very cool artwork I do like the 3d effect and again for a, a first-time designer when he did that it was great I think it's a quite a clever approach I do like the way it's been put together some classic old nostalgic I feel um, themes in board games are, are prevalent in this game and obviously he's done some great things ever since so this was um, apparently, I think, yeah, the game that um, really introduced him and got him known for his follow-up game, Elysian, because I think it was Yellow or Space Cowboys. They uh, they liked this game, they saw it, and then they saw the potential in him. So yeah, this is Devi um, Devinari, and it's an interesting kind of smallish box. It doesn't outstay its size, which is also handy to know. I don't know how frequent it is to get your hands on this, to be honest, if you're interested in it. But, um, yeah, it's something that I thought is uh, adds to the, the tomb of time. So you'll see a, a thing that will pop in later on the last 20 seconds, which relates to, um, if you haven't already subscribed, you'll see the opportunity to do that if you haven't already. And that obviously supports the channel. And if you like it, please hit the like button in YouTube. And finally, any comments, please put them in the comments box in YouTube as well, and the description, of course, to make sure I haven't made any errors. So 548, that is Devinari by Brett J. Gilbert. Thanks very much for watching. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.